Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Oh, what are those? Pokemon and AME, Chief Editor to Sibling Reviews here. Welcome to the second and final part of my Double Vote Week 1 Review Challenge. Can I review two games in the respective launch weeks? And the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask review says that I can't. Last week I reviewed the latest edition of the Creative Assembly's Total War series. This time, I won the color blow by reviewing the latest edition of to the highly successful Sonic the Hedgehog series. Does this game live up to the legacy of the franchise? Let's find out. Round two. Fight. Okay, similar to my review of Sonic Frontiers, to avoid any corporate bias, I ask for both Sonic and Tails to both leave the room. So off you go to Greg's, enjoy your potato wedges, and I'll contact you when the review is done. Alright James, I'll see you later. Okie dokie, with formalities aside, let's go on with this review. In the gaming industry today, there are two franchises that stood the test of time. Mario representing Nintendo, and the blue blur himself, Sonic representing Sega. His first appearance was for the Sega Genesis in 1981. Today, the Sonic the Hedgehog has been through both the rough and the smooth. In 2017, the last real 2D Sonic game, Sonic Mini, was released. The game went on to be the highest rated Sonic game in 15 years, as it was praised by both critics and the community. The game's expansion, Sonic Mania Plus, was released the very next year. Apart from Sonic Origins, which was plagued by blogs and key features that were missing. For example, adding lives to anniversary mode. PC users, this key feature can be added through modding. So, it was more or less a swing and a miss. Earlier on this week, this offering to 2D Sonic Diehards was released. This title takes place in the North Star Islands. Our antagonist, Dr. Eggman, and a character that we have not seen in the Sonic franchise for decades. Fang is hunting giant animals in this mysterious archipelago of islands, turning them into badniks to enter his army. So it is up to Sonic and the gang to stop them. The accessibility scores are as follows. To get the ball rolling, visibility gets scored a 9.5. Although there are no colorblind modes nor filters available in this game, there is very little need for one. There are no color-coded elements that will pose issues for players with visual impairments. Next up, audibility, give it 10. In this game, there are no spoken dialogues, so therefore, no subtitles are required. Back in the Mega Drive days, due to the Ceres restrictions of a cartridge, no spoken dialogue was added to any games of the era. Imaginations had to fill in the blanks. Next up, Mobility got a Sky High 11 on the PC version. Yup, you guessed it, which we used to test the game. The keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized. For a Sonic game, this is not recommended, therefore, that's no good. However, there is controller support right out of the box. You could use either the analog stick or D-pad to move left and right. Also, the controls can be fully customized via the controls section of the options menu. This makes the game a lot more accessible for a player with mobility impairments, especially in a controller dependent game. Last by certainly by no means least, gameplay give it 10. And last by certainly by no means least, gameplay give it 10. Although this game brings a lot of new game changing mechanics never before seen in a 2D Sonic game to the table, it seems they have left the franchise's heritage out completely. First off, back in the Genesis games, which this game is based on, lives were a thing. You had a finite number of lives. When that number hit zero, game over, yeah. and that's back to the start of the game. In this game, this mechanic has been removed completely. Personally, I think it should have been added as an option, maybe in a future update, but not in this current state. However, a viewer of the channel, Paul, Mint Scott, big shout out to you, brought up to the fact that certain games of the Mario franchise, for example, Super Mario Odyssey, has taken a similar approach. So, do you think scrapping lines should be the standard of all platformers in the future? Or do you think this vital piece of gaming heritage should be preserved? Let me know down in those comments. The graphics, however, looks a lot different from Mania. 
they've replaced the hand-drawn art style which was used in the god tier Streets of Rage 4 with a more cell shaded art style. This shift does make the game look a lot better to make it more relevant in today's market. On the other hand, this does make the game feel out of place, especially for a 2D Sonic game. Also, all characters have abilities that can be unlocked as you complete special stages. This rewards explorations of the levels as you discover new pathways and of course, additional special stages. Also, there is a golden opportunities where the developers seem to have missed. Online Co-op It would have been an excellent addition, especially in a game that seems to have a big focus on cooperative play. In summary, Sonic Superstars has a lot of good things added to the game, while others are omitted completely. Sega seemed to have been trying to fix what it broke. Although it feels out of place, the large level sizes seem to be adding focus on the exploration. So if you look past the quirks and omissions, this game is a thoroughly enjoyable 2D Sonic experience. The overall score is 101.25%. This is Spartacum Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disabling and Review signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Hey, what's up Sonic? Good news, the review's done.